Hello and welcome back. So in the comments, someone suggested that we, <clears throat> how the system of using a custom uh, name here in the URL can be done for the profile. So if I go to the profile of this one right here, uh, this is Jen Mandawa, right? Uh, you see it says profile here. That's the link to the uh, website and then profile and then there is, there is this random ID here. So he was asking how to put the name of the user in the URL there. Now that's very easy because this is exactly the same system. As you can see here, this is a random string, but instead of a random string, you can tell it to use the username. So I'll give you a simple example here. We will, I will show you how to make that happen um, in here. So for example, this one is Jen Mandawa. Let's go to our table here and let's go to users. Now, right in users, the user ID is a random string. So like where there is Jen Mandawa here, I can just edit this. Just get rid of the entire user ID and just say Jane dot Mandawa. So I've gotten the first name and last name here and put it there, put a dot in between and press enter. Okay, so once I've done that, then the system is the same. Now, if I refresh the page, it will tell me that profile was not found. But if I go back to students and click on the profile of this one, you see that their name is now part of the URL. So that's how it's done. It's, it's that simple. But if you want, when I create a new user to have that, it's a simple affair as well. We just need to go to uh, the model. Where is this? The uh, user is model. And here where we're creating the make user ID right here. So instead of asking for a random string, what we will do is uh, we are going to uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. let me duplicate this so I don't have to get rid of this one for now. So the user ID here. Now remember that data here contains all the data that was submitted. So this includes the first name and last name as well because this is part of this. So data is contains all this here. So first name and last name, we can just concatenate those two. So right here, I'll say data user ID be equal to, and then I will just do uh, first name here. I'll just say first name like so. And then dot to concatenate and put an actual string and put the dot there and then do that again, a dot and then last name here. Like so. Okay, so we can remove this now. Let me come back here. So now the user ID has a first name and last name, but it's very possible that somebody else could be using this already. So it's a very simple thing to check to find out if nobody is using this. So we'll put a while loop that we will check continuously uh, whether this is true or not. So we just say while. So while true, and let's go down here like this. So while we're going to check for something here, if it returns true, then we do something. Now, the thing with the while loop is it's very possible to create an infinite loop because right now, if I run this, this will never exit this part because this will always be true. True is always true. So you must give it a way to negate this eventually. So whatever condition you put in here, just make sure it's inside the loop itself and can be altered inside the loop. So we want to check here if uh, another user exists who has this. So we can easily do this by saying this. This is what exactly what we did for, uh, where is that? When we are looking for, is it a school? Let me check down here. I think we did something like this before. Nope, it's actually in the user. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it in the user? How come I can't remember this? Oh, it's right here when we're checking for an existing email. Yeah, right here. So this is the question right there, the if statement to look for. So I'm just going to copy exactly what's here. Actually, I don't need to. It's just where this where. Mm. So let's do that. So it's this where. Or you can use first. Doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so in our case, we are looking for a user ID. So where the user ID is equal to this user ID right there. So if the result is true, then it means it exists. Okay, if it exists, uh, let's uh, let's change this value right there. That way, the next time it tries this, this will be a different value. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. We'll have an infinite loop. So back here, paste that like so. And then we'll do exactly the same thing we did except this time um wait a second actually we don't even need to do this hmm. so all i want to do is concatenate a four digit number so i will start at 1000 like this but that's up to you you can start at 100 comma 9999 like this so this is going to create a random number to add to this. Now, in order to add, we're not going to just say equals. We'll put a dot here, which will say add to this a random number. So once it adds that, it's going to check again to see if now this value still exists. If it does, it will keep adding a random number to the end until so i think maybe it's better to start at 10 like this so that we give it a wide berth okay this is good once that is done we are done then we can move on so let's test this to see if it's going to work as planned so i'm going to go to students and i want to add a new student here so uh, this one will be um I don't even know any names to add here. So just say guy, surname, dude, guy, dude. So say guy at yahoo.com. Select gender. This one is a boy. Let's use the same password to avoid confusion. And then let's add the user. So guy, dude is right here. Now, if you click on guy dude on the profile you will see that there is guy dot dude in there if you want this to be lowercase because as you can see there are capital letters in there some might not like this so we're going to say string to lower like this and use that function to make this a lowercase value like this okay but otherwise um, this is all you need to do and now you have the user's name in the link like that. So this is good for social websites, for example, because uh, it helps to recognize the user like that. It's definitely better than a random string like this one here, which is like that. So I will go in here just to keep the tradition going and refresh this. And then I will change all these, Mary Piri. I'll just do Mary dot Kiri like that. Then I would change uh, as many as I can. Anna dot Jones. And this one is uh, Vibe Peters. Vibe dot Peters. And this one is Bob Marley. Doesn't really matter what you write in here as long as they are characters they are going to work so maria dot jones and finally john tembo likes it uh, yes 
Okay, pretty good. I've gone through all of them. I can change this to lowercase. I don't like uppercases in the URLs. So that is good. So now if I refresh, yes, now everybody has their name in the URL. Okay, so pretty good. That was a tangent, but uh, a user asked for that. So that's why I had to show how it can be done. Now on classes here, we have lost because now the person that created the classes is no longer in the table. So this is one thing we have to keep in mind. If you delete a user, anything that was created by that user will have these warnings like this. So we're going to see how to handle that towards the end of the series. But for now, we just have to change these guys. So the same thing will happen with schools and what else? Everything must change. So I will copy this user ID because I know this is the user that created all of these guys. And I will go to schools, for example. So the user ID here is the same. So select all, paste, uh, same thing here, select all, paste. And let's go to classes. Same thing, the user ID, yeah. paste there and paste. We could have used a, a query, but uh, we would have wasted time with that. So back here, wait a minute, what about users? Okay, so everything is cool now. If I go back to school, staff members, students, classes, and tests, very nice. Okay, so that's great. Uh, let's continue with our classes here in the next video.